Hey everyone, X Adam One here. These are three of my 380 ACP pistols. I normally don't carry these unless I'm wearing something like shorts or just want something more for deep concealment. Originally I bought the 380 bodyguard and it turned out to be one of my least favorite guns to shoot, mainly because I think for me personally, it's too small and too thin for my hands. When I grip this gun, one is of course the two finger hold i'm not a fan of i do like that it has the thumb cutout which makes it a little bit more comfortable most manufacturers only have the thumb cutout on the left hand side for right-handed shooters this one actually has it for both what it doesn't have is ambidextrous uh, magazine releases which is okay it's not something i expect being a left-handed individual but it would have been nice but the main reason is one, the two finger grip, I feel like I'm doing a little teacup hold with my pinky bean underneath, is that this gun frame is so thin that when I shoot it, the recoil makes the gun really dig into the meat of my hand and it makes it uncomfortable to shoot. Every other two or three shots, I feel like I have to readjust my grip because it's just you know, hitting the inner part of my hand. Uh, so hard that it's just again uncomfortable almost to the point of being painful but not quite there another thing and i've only had this happen once is because this gun is so thin and this beaver tail is helpful but not like helpful enough i have had slide bite on this gun you can see how close that is i actually got it caught to the point that i had to have someone else help me because i couldn't wreck the slide and hold the gun because it was essentially hanging on my hand so that sucked and again just too small for me personally it might work out for someone with smaller hands where you could get a really nice solid grip maybe get part of your third finger on the grip at the bottom but also again the main thing is just for it not to hurt your hand because this is so thin i believe hogue does make some of these uh, sleeves that go over this i never looked into that because that would just make the gun wider and at that point defeats the purpose of having a really small thin frame gun another thing i didn't like about it was the six rounds capacity that's all the rounds i can get into this gun six of course plus one they do make this extended magazine i believe this makes it 10 plus one but at that point it's ridiculously long you're no longer carrying this gun this is more I personally got it as a range toy, but as you can see, three grip, full size grip on here, even extra if you had an extra finger for some reason. You can actually hold all four of them like that. But again, at that point, it's just a range gun. You're not carrying that. I mean, I guess you could. I personally wouldn't. Or if you're an individual who only has one gun, because we forget sometimes people don't have multiple guns. Some people just have one or two. You could carry this during the day and when you're at home put the extension and have it be your home defense gun we all have different options after that i ended up buying the glock 42. the glock 42 is wider it is heavier you could definitely feel that it's top heavy but for me being wider made it more comfortable so i could really grip that now one thing is with this standard magazine i still get two fingers on there third finger still right underneath but because this is a little bit wider i can get a better grip on it when i shoot the gun i don't feel like a thin frame just jabbing into my hand i feel an entire gun kind of sliding so it's a softer recoil for me again for me and my hands Another thing I did like about this one is ambidextrous mag release. I did reverse it, so that's a positive. This one does have sights I could use. I went a step further and upgraded them to the front orange dot. And of course, the tritium rear sights, because this was going to be a carry gun alternative. And I did use it just for that as an alternative. This one, as you can tell, one of the bigger complaints that people mentioned online was, of course, that you really can't use the sights. But this is supposed to be for 
up close engagement so you probably wouldn't need to be aiming through the sights if the target's like five yards away from you so it does work it is reliable it's just not a comfortable gun for me to shoot and in, since i couldn't enjoy it i ended up just sitting in my safe most of the time this one does have the extended magazine as well it will give you a full grip and I think it's a solid gun. I can shoot even better like this. One thing that does help me for this gun is that it has this front trigger guard. So I could put my other finger, my index finger on it to really hold the gun down. The reason I typically don't carry it in this configuration with the extended magazine is because with that length in the grip and the barrel and the width and the weight, it's not far off from my shield plus. So if I'm gonna carry it with this, give me 10 plus one with this extra length i might as well carry my shield plus get 12 or 13 plus one and up it to nine millimeter instead of 380 so when i do carry this it's typically with this six round magazine in its smaller configuration up until recently that is now if i do carry a 380 i'm going to start carrying the bodyguard 2.0 this one has a few things I like. One is the weight. When you feel this, it almost feels like a toy. It is so much lighter than the other two. This one might be small, but you could feel some solid uh, weight to it. And of course, barrel on the slide. This is a relatively thin slide, so I'm surprised that it feels as heavy as it does. The Glock, of course, is much thicker. It definitely is the heaviest feeling of the three, but this one has a very thin slide. The recoil is quick, it's not sharp, it's not heavy. It is 380, but that aside, this one has the sharpest recoil in my opinion. This is a softer, forceful recoil, but very manageable. This one is just a quick slide rack almost, and least amount of recoil of the three, again, in my opinion. I do like that it has that flat trigger. I do like that that safety dingus blade on here is wide and flat as opposed to just a thin blade i like that it has the ambidextrous mag release i did switch that one as well same as with the glock this one does feel different of course um, it does have some stippling which makes it feel like sandpaper but it's such a small button i think that's a huge plus that they did that if they had not done that i think that button would just be annoying to press but because it really grips on it's very easy to engage. I got the one without the safety, but they do offer a manual safety option. With the flush magazine, I can get three fingers on there. The length on these is almost identical, but the big difference is the grip angle. This angle kind of pushes it back and the trigger guard. The trigger guard is a little lower. This one is much higher and exaggerated. So between the angle and the trigger guards, it does allow more room for your fingers. And again, this is the flush magazine versus this flush magazine. And I'm not exaggerating my finger positioning. I'm trying to get it as high as I can. Even with the slight overlapping of my fingers, I still can't quite get it. And again, these guns are dimensions wise, pretty close. The only thing I would say is the grip angle and of course the slide width. But the slide width when I'm carrying it never has bothered me, but the grip always has. So that's a huge plus to this M&P. And again, 10 plus one versus six plus one. And that's without getting any extended magazine. With the extended magazine, I'm looking at 12 plus one. Now the 12 plus one gives me an easy full grip. This is typically how, well, how I plan on carrying it when I do. Right now I just have a little sticky style holster for it. I do plan on getting a thin Kydex one if I could find one within a reasonable price where I'm not having to ship it and wait a significant amount of time. But I do like this overall style. I do plan on possibly upgrading that to an aftermarket orange dot as you can see. That's a huge difference in visibility. This is of course factory, so I didn't expect too much from it, but it's almost the same setup, of course. This one's a lot more visible and they both have that tritium center. 
And of course, the rear sights on these are just blacked out. So if they make some, I do plan on getting a similar setup to this, where it's got tritium in the back, big orange dot in the front. So if I do carry this and it happen to be out at night, I would like to have use of some sights. But all of these are essentially up close guns, but it's nice to have that control. I don't want to just kind of aim and shoot. I want to have solid control, solid aim. And I have shot this, I did pretty well uh, for the first time shooting it. We all have our expectations. We know more or less what our capabilities are when it comes to shooting. So it's not as good as I could have done in my, from my experience with my other guns. But for the first time shooting a gun that I'm not accustomed to, I think I did really good. And that, if you're a first time gun owner, would be a good experience. You want to be able to get a gun that you're hitting the target with that's going to give you joy to actually shoot. It would suck to be a new gun owner, get a gun, you're all over the place. For the life of you, you can't get it to just be on target. I think this is a perfect gun for a new gun owner. All of these have little pros and cons. I think this has the most pros with the least amount of cons. Again, lightest weight, very thin slide. It already comes with good sights versus no sights or plain sights that had to be upgraded and the most capacity 10 versus 6 and 6 and that's in its standard configuration that's without getting the extended magazine and it does come with the extended magazine already so you have that option if you only have one gun with the extended magazine if you don't want to carry it this way this could be your home defense gun and 380 13 rounds at home reasonably close distances you're more than well equipped with this gun there are better options but again being gun guys we forget not everybody has multiple guns so you might have just one or two if you just want a carry gun with the capabilities of home defense all of these would work just you get an extended mag for the home defense but i'd still go for the smith and wesson bodyguard 2.0 if budget is a factor all of these in most people's cases would be within reason. These Bodyguard 2.0 right now, uh, the 2.0 is running somewhere about $400, 379, 400. I've seen them as high as 425 for just the gun itself, no bags or anything like that. Glock 42 typically sits at about 450. I lucked out when I got this one because I got it from a range where nobody was renting it, so they got rid of it. So I got a really good price on it, but they usually run about four to 450. These are all over the place. I've seen them as high as 400 and as low as 269. So it's up to you. You decide what you want. I would recommend getting your hands on one of them in person before making the purchase. If you do, I still think this is the most comfortable, the most value for what you're getting, more rounds, better grip, good reliability, and it's again close to about the $400 price range. You're paying a little bit more for a Glock. Glock has more aftermarket support and you are limiting yourself to round capacity unless you get aftermarket accessories for more rounds. But again, at that point, you are now adding to the gun overall size. And of course the Bodyguard 1.0, which is my least favorite, least amount of capacity, least comfort and for me personally that leads to the least accurate or accurate in my hands and the double action that it comes with does have dual striking capabilities but it's heavy it's a small gun it's easy to just move and be off target this is if you're at the range in person you're just up close and shooting but again, I think this is just better suited for someone with smaller hands. Let me know what you think. What would you pick? If you had these same three guns lined up, which one would you take?